Hi, I'm Zach with Pinecone, and today we're going to deploy the Pinecone AWS reference architecture with Pulumi end to end. So to begin with, if you come to the repository, you'll find that there's a table of contents with various guides linked. There's also a quick start guide, which is essentially what we'll be following here. And the quick start guide is the fastest way to get up and running. So what we're going to do together in this video is we're going to create a new IM user in AWS. We're going to provision security credentials for that IM user. That IM user is going to become the primary way that we interface between our Pulumi CLI and our actual resources in the AWS account. It's the IM user that's going to have permissions to the various resources that we're deploying and destroying. We're next going to configure those AWS credentials in our .AWS credentials file so that Pulumi can find them. We will install the Pulumi CLI. We will configure Pulumi to use that AWS profile that we've just configured. We are going to grab our Pinecone API key, and then there are just three environment variables that we need to set that allow the reference architecture to interface with Pinecone's vector database. And then we will run Pulumi up, and that's about it. And uh, as we're deploying, I'll talk through some considerations and then we will uh, look at uh, things that we need to know in order to do a clean deployment. But in essence, this video will focus on uh, the setup and the deployment end to end. And then in separate videos, I will step through the various components and then common tasks such as setting up a jump host, etc. So to begin with, let's hop over to uh, our IM panel in our AWS account. Uh, one best practice that I'll just note is that you, you don't want to use your root user. So if every AWS account has what's called a root user. That's what you provided uh, an email for when you initially signed up for the account. The root user has special permissions for things like billing by default uh, and others. And similar to the concept of a root user in Linux, it is just a more powerful user. So you don't want to use your root user for things like infrastructure as code or reference architectures. Instead, you want to come in here and create an IAM user. And for the purposes of this demo, we will name the user Pulumi so that we know um, that this user is associated with our Pulumi installation or for the reference architecture work. And we're going to create an IAM user. We'll use um, an auto-generated password that's fine for now. And then you can also optionally give this IAM user access to the console so that you could sign in as the IAM user. Um, and that's, of course, not required for this, but the real thing that we need to do is give this user uh, administrator access level. So this is what will allow them to, if you look at the administrator access policy, it's effectively star star. That means that you can perform any action on any resource for any service in AWS. Um, it is the most powerful policy. We will attach that directly for expediency's sake. You might also prefer to create an IAM user group, attach the permissions to that group, and then put the user in the IAM group. But for now, uh, let's just keep this simple. And once we've created our user, you'll notice that they've got admin access. So that's everything that they'll need to create and destroy any type of resource. They also have IAM user change password, which would allow them to modify their own password if you're going to use them as a console user. So we will uh, get back these credentials initially. Um, you can also download the CSV file so that you don't lose them. And uh, we can go about things that way. And if we now, I, I'm not so concerned with uh, the console access right now for the purposes of this demonstration. So I'm going to return to the users list. And what I'm going to do now, click into this Pulumi user, go to the security credentials tab, and then scroll down until we find access keys. And so access keys, uh, they, they come in a pair. There's the access key ID and there's the access secret key. And together you provide them to the AWS API, either via the CLI or other tools such as Pulumi that interact with AWS APIs. And the keys are, uh, are responsible for creating a secure signature that proves that you are you as the user and authenticates you to AWS. So, uh, we're just going to choose other for this. This is a updated UX that's prompting you to consider alternative access patterns. Uh, you can enter just a description if you want, but we can also just create the key. 
So we get the access key, the secret access key, and then in general, uh, the recommendation is that these should go into a secure password manager such as Bitwarden. Um, you can also, uh, once you write them to the credentials file that we're going to write them to, you could also just you know, close this browser. We're not gonna see them again and they're going to remain in, in that one file. So uh, let's take a look at doing that now. So I'm going to open up this AWS credentials file. So in the AWS credentials file, this is Tomil syntax. So I will name my user Pulumi. The first argument is AWS access key ID. Copy that. The second argument is AWS secret access key. With those updates written to my credential file, I can now do a test. If I do, if I use the AWS command line tools and pass profile Pulumi S3 LS, do I indeed get back S3 buckets? And I do. So that's how we can test that the uh, credentials that we've just um, set in our credentials file are working properly. So at this point, what we've accomplished is that we have our AWS IAM user. We have the credentials for the IAM user. We've done a quick smoke test to ensure that those IAM credentials are uh, working properly, that we can actually contact the AWS APIs with them. So now the next step in our quick start is to install the Pulumi CLI. Um, thankfully, Pulumi has a nice uh, depending on if you're on Homebrew or Windows, you can use Homebrew, but there's also a nice uh, install script. I happen to be on Linux right now, so you run this install script, you'll get the latest uh, Pulumi CLI uh, extracted and installed to your system, and then you would typically need to restart your, your shell as well. So uh, you would run you know, CSH in my case, and. I've already installed Pulumi in the past, and so it's already written to my shell. It's been updated to uh, so that my path includes the path to the Pulumi CLI. You might see output similar to that, saying that you need to restart your shell. So if you're in ZSH, you'd run ZSH, um, etc. The other thing that you may need to do if you have not used Pulumi before is to link your Pulumi account, your free Pulumi Cloud account with your GitHub account, and that's a single OAuth round trip. So if you see any output in the command line, uh, when you're running the command line saying that you need to complete you know, authentication or, or set up for your Pulumi account, keep an eye out for that. Log in with your GitHub account and do the OAuth round trip. So now that we have Pulumi installed, uh, the last thing we need to do to get Pulumi working against our account is to tell Pulumi which AWS profile we have in our credentials file that we want it to use. So in this case, since I've named my user Pulumi up here, I'm going to say Pulumi config set is the command. AWS colon profile is the target. So that's the configuration option that we're changing. Pulumi is the argument, which is the username to use or for the, or the profile name. And then once we run that, uh, Pulumi is now configured to use this user and to use this user's IAM credentials when it's interacting with AWS's API. So when it's asking, is this NAT gateway already deployed or finished? Or when it's asking, please you know, create this ECS service and start it, it's using the credentials of our IAM user that we've just configured. So at this point, the next step that we need to perform is uh, to set up everything from um, the Pinecone side. The nice thing about this is Pinecone has a pretty generous free tier. So if you have not uh, already created an account, you can create an account by going to HTTPS forward slash app dot pinecone dot IO. And that will take you to uh, essentially to here. It's free. You can sign up with Google. Um, everybody gets at least one free index. And that is also sufficient for the purposes of deploying this reference architecture. Um, so if you don't already have a Pinecone account, go ahead and make a free one. In here, I'm going to create index. Now, I will mention the reference architecture itself is smart enough to create your index if you 
if the index doesn't exist. So 